<laughs> eh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Let me um I'm going to cut this down a little bit. Cuz I will jam out to this song the whole time. You Look. This is my jam. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hey. That disco beat. Hey. <laughs> yes. Okay, I had to let that play out because I love that song so much. Hold on, I thought I stopped everything. Hold on, I didn't. Hold on. Because I don't love that song at all. But um, I just love the disco song so much now look i'm actually supposed to be doing an interview with a young lady who had scheduled with me some time out and i saw it about a month ago that she had scheduled with me today and i thought i had messaged her then uh with instructions and stuff but i guess i i i didn't i know there's automation set up and I know that the basic automation was set up, but um, I, I had a feeling that she wasn't going to show and I'm going to tell you why it's it has nothing, it has more to do with what I'm about to say. than probably her um, in particular right Okay, so what I wanted to say about this and you guys i'm in a short chair I you know i've got on this beautiful red dress which you guys can't see because I'm in a short chair but I wanted to um in case I look weird on on here I just wanted to give you guys let you guys know that um also I realized I don't have on my headset so that could be part of the issue too let me put on my headset so I can hear what I I sound like and make sure you can hear me and that this all sounds good like you can hear my my um fan going in the background can you hear that anyway this is what i want to say um i had made some post about it i you know a lot of people i don't think pay attention to my post but i've been making post about it like you know has anyone been feeling weird has anyone been feeling disoriented uh has anyone feeling like they're uh not getting um you know not as motivated um there's, it's, it's coming out in a, a lot of different ways, okay? But we have, over the last couple of weeks, um, we've gone through a lot of planetary changes. I mean, I'm an astrologer, so I'm looking at it from that viewpoint. Now, I, it could just be my own delusion, right? I'm trying to find a way to uh, generalize or um, explain away what is already happening, but I feel like when you start seeing it on a massive scale, like when it's happening on Moss, then you do, I do want to look at it from the, you know, how, what is it in the sky if, 
anything uh, that could be causing it. And right now we've got Jupiter uh, connect Uranus, which is rare. I, I mean, we're talking hundreds of years. I think 400, if I'm not mistaken, the last time Jupiter and Uranus were conjunct in uh, Taurus, it's been a while. And let's not forget, whenever Uranus is in Taurus, there tends to be war. And we are, there are wars all around us right now. And if you're not in a country that is war torn, you know, there's rumors of war and talks of war and war. there's all kinds of things going on uh, in, in that way. So um, yeah, th that is something that is definitely a potential, okay, for uh, many. Also, we've just gone through a total solar eclipse, and although it happened on the 20th, so five days ago, the effects of it, I mean, deep effects, are going to be for the next couple of weeks. So, you know, um, that's two weeks of us feeling that. Um, hope I got that right, because we did, we had the the full moon on the 25th, but that wasn't, that was in Taurus. So there was two weeks ago, we went through that, but now we're, we got the Taurus, right? We just went through the full moon. So now the next one's gonna be the new moon, I'm assuming in Gemini. So we're like in the midst of a change. And especially once we get into Gemini season, cause that is really the time of change, but I'm really concerned about, um, you know, just a lot of the different changes we had. Mercury retrograde, I think it went direct yesterday as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, or going direct to or the 27th, I think it is. So um, we're going to be coming out of that. But a lot of us have been going back and looking at things and reevaluating things and, um, it's just been a very interesting time from that aspect. And there's the DEF Comet. Don't forget the DEF Comet, which I think comes through on the 27th, if I'm not mistaken, of April. But we've been in the like shadow of the DEF Comet ever since the, the um, total, total uh, solar eclipse on the, um, what was that, the 14th or whatever it was two weeks ago. So anyway, we've been going through a lot, astrologically, psychologically spiritually i mean i emotionally i'm not sure what you as an individual might be experiencing but something tells me if you're like the rest of us you've been going through it i've been going through it okay and and when i say that i say that with all sincerity now i knew i was going to be going through it last year when i saw where all the the, you know, where they were going to be, you, all, you know, how it was going to stack up. But um, just a few days ago, I almost died. Apparently, I got heart trouble. <laughs> they let me know I got heart disease. Yay. But it's okay. I mean, look, as far as our family goes, as the women go, I've, I've, I've already overcome what they consider to be the OB curse, which is our family, you know, surname. The women, a lot of them die at 50 or before because of the heart. So if you make it past, you're, you're a winner and I'm past that. So I'm a winner, even if I've got all these things, because they told me I had emphysema a few months back um, about six months ago and now it's heart disease and um you know it's it's uh it's aging that's what it's called <laughs> that's what it's called and it's also pluto in my first house pluto is in aquarius in my sight of my first house it's been in my first house so it's this is um you know i i almost feel like i'm just watching it all play out you know but I'm gonna just be fabulous the entire time. I feel like unless I'm actually dead, I'm gonna keep coming out like I'm not, there's nothing wrong with me because why should I burden everybody with all my you know, illness? Everybody's got something. 
I'm not the only person with something. Everybody got something. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just saying, I might, I don't want to sit around here and worry about what I got and don't got, end up living another 30 years <laughs> with it, right? Because that's how it works usually. But um, I, I also know my horoscope says I'll die suddenly, and what, which always I always knew that's probably going to be probably the kindest thing is is probably going to be the heart attack because I got Aquarius in the first house and uh, the opposite of Aquarius is Leo and and that rules the heart. And I already have blood disease, which uh, you know Leo rules the blood, the heart, the spine, and the blood. Come back, blue. And um, I already knew that's how it would go down. Uh, the heart, the back, the, the blood. And um, I've had black back problems before. <laughs> I was in a wheelchair for seven years. I actually I dislocated both knees. Um, but, uh, and I had blood disease. I've got thrombocytopenia and uh, autoimmune. Um, and uh, now I've got the heart disease so it's uh you know i i i as an astrologer i i could have wrote it out but i i don't want to um and and i also the timing of it you know this little heart scare um well you know um uh, my heart even just talking about it but uh this full moon in Taurus was at four degrees and it was trining uh, my natal Uranus. Um, you know, and don't forget Uranus is in Taurus, right? You see the cross there. Anyway, um, uh, natal Uranus in Virgo in the eighth house of death. And um, that's exactly when my heart scare came. Yeah. Just like, a, like, like I wrote it. If I was an astrologer, I would have called it. But um, yeah, yeah, weird, isn't it? Life is weird when you think about it. And also things like astrology, which some people still believe isn't true, but then stuff like that happens and it's so easily explained because it's already there. Ugh, it's creepy, really creepy. Um, give me a second, okay, give me a second. Hello, you guys, it's Adrian. I just wanted to come back and say, if you are an entrepreneur and you would like to um, appear as a guest on our podcast, do reach out to me at astrologyalookinside at gmail.com. That's astrologyalookinside at gmail.com or go to our Calendly. There's actually um, a a link there where you can schedule right on her Calendly and that's Calendly.com slash astrology a look inside that's Calendly.com slash astrology a look inside I look forward to talking with you no matter what type of business you have but especially if you are a holistic business a spiritual based business a female owned business i love women businesses so reach out to me i would love to talk to you much love so let's see i went to um i had decided because my guests didn't show up uh today that i would just talk about some things and i had earlier said that i I forgive my guests because I personally have had some issues when it comes to getting to appointments. And this, this has been for months. I mean, we're talking about five months, six months of me really consistently missing out on my appointments. That's why I made it such a big deal to show up today because I, I've had this problem when it comes to appointments. And, um, you know, I don't know how many other people have had this issue. I have thought it was because of the Neptune uh, in Pisces, but there could be other things. Uh, right now, there is Mercury retrograde. That could be part of it. Um, but if you've been missing appointments, you know, just feeling like you're not following through the way 
you would have or you know should <laughs> then you could be experiencing whatever this is that i think a lot of people are experiencing right now and it it's um it's it's uncomfortable it's unnerving because i know myself i have always been someone who's um you know i i'm pretty reliable <laughs> i'm kind of like old reliable so when i am um, missing appointments and things like that, I, you know, there's something on, there's something going on, uh, in, in the stars and whatever. And the idea that it might be affecting people in a larger, it, like not just myself, but multiple people of per, perhaps even a certain age group of people. Um, but it could just be overall that it is an aspect that's affecting people overall. And I think a lot of us are going through that and experiencing that right now. And so um, if you are, I would love to hear that and wherever you're seeing this in the comments, because it, it, it gives me validation that I'm on to something when I hear from other people. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That resonates with me because X, Y, Z or, you know, whatever. Um, if you could just share that, um, if for nothing else, as but to give the validation now i'm going to do something special i'm going to do something special so give me a second and then i'm going to get it all set up and then we're going to do the thing that i'm about to do which is different than what i plan to do which it yeah it's it's completely different than what i plan to do but it is going to be kind of, kind of cool so we'll do that in a second Before I go on to what I'm about to go on to, I had just made a post on Facebook earlier today. And I, it, this was actually a carryover about something that happened on TikTok. But I had gotten a comment on TikTok. And on in the comment, it said, uh, damn, you look like Michael Jackson and Wendy Williams mixed together. And I said, why do people say mean things to me? Why say such a thing? It is not true. I don't look like Wendy Williams at all. And I don't think I actually look like Michael Jackson. I mean, everything on my face is real. There's nothing not real here. And like my nose, my... I mean, I always wondered if it's the chin because I have a square chin, you know, but I don't know. And that's the kind of things that, you know, I get. I don't know if it's just an overall essence of meanness that is just taken over because some people are just trolls and they just love to troll. And it is something I've been trolled about, like uh, uh, looking like Michael Jackson. Um, I've been trolled about that for years. It's one of the reasons I'm blonde or, you know, I, I go blonde because when I wear dark hair, I'm always called Michael Jackson. And I always wondered if it's because of the square chin, because I do, I have a square chin and Michael had a square chin. But other than that, I, I don't look at thing like Michael Jackson. And I, I have a real nose. I mean, it's a little nose, but it's my nose. It's, it's a little, it's a round nose. It's not even a not nose. I, I don't get why people call it, other than the fact that I'm pale but we've got a, a, a country of mixed people. I'm not the only pale person. So I don't get what it is. I really don't. And um, I guess it's just something about me, right? It reminds people of Michael. I mean, he's beloved. So I mean, what, I mean, what can I say? <laughs> I think they can't put their finger on it, but I, I, I tell you, if I am called Michael Jackson once, I, a week, I would say at least five times a week, at least. Maybe more, I'm not checking like I used to, but I get a lot on YouTube, but now it's spreading over to like TikTok, I've gotten it everywhere. Like, and I'm thinking, what are they seeing? What is that? I don't get it. I'm definitively female. I'm always been a female. I don't, I don't get it. But 
I guess in the minds of others, they think they are seeing something and in their mind, I look like Michael, even though I got a real nose. And I, I don't look like Michael at all. So crazy. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I go through. But I, I brought it up because I'm thinking it has something to do with people trying to be mean and um, or funny. I can't figure, I don't think that was funny. Because Wendy Williams, I no one, I don't want to be, I know I don't look like her. I have been said, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I run my mouth like her a lot. So I can see why someone might say that because I have the blonde hair. Um, I don't know. Um, it's weird. Um, being called Michael Jackson. And I do think it's the square chin. I mean, you don't see many people with the square jawline like that um, in women on, you know, they always have the women either shave their chins down or, you know, it's not so prominent. I always had a prominent chin. And um, I think that might be what it is. I, Cause Michael had probably one of the most prominent chins and you don't see a lot of females with prominent chins um, you know, you just don't, they hide. I don't know if it's, you know, it's too manly, but I'm, I'm all female, I have a child, you know, been married a few times, all female, it's all me, never had no surgeries, just all what God gave me and some makeup and some really nice wigs that I have been promoting, by the way, <laughs> just saying. So I don't get it. But I, I can tell you for a fact that the reason I, I go blonde is to avoid being called Michael Jackson. It is a fact, okay? And the crazy thing is when I was younger um, and chunky, like I used to be really plump too, but um, they used to say I look like Janet Jackson. So I, it changed over time from Janet or Latoya to, to now it's just straight up Michael. And I'm like, wow, you know, interesting. I turned to Michael, which... I mean, this is years. I've been going through this for years. So anyway, I, you know, I, I've been trying to deal with that because that, when you hear it one time, it's weird, then it gets weirder, but I've heard it like a, about a thousand times. Like that's how many times. I've, I'm not kidding. I've heard that I look like Michael Jackson. So I must look like Michael Jackson. I, I don't get it, but um, in the minds of some people, that's what they're seeing. They're seeing Michael Jackson with a blonde wig on. That's, I don't know why, but I'm just me. Now it could just be something in my horoscope that is reminding people of Michael. I don't know, but uh, I just want to tell, I, I guess the reason I brought this up is like, if you're online, especially if you're an entrepreneur, and you're getting that those kind of trolls. I did not used to think it was acceptable or normal. I used to cry, I used to get so weirded out. Now I just kind of make fun of it, make posts about it, or I just ignore it because it happened so often that, but it hasn't happened for a few weeks. So it threw me off today. Like, and it was on a, I was, I had blonde hair and I'm thinking, where did she get that? So even with the blonde hair, he just mixed in Wendy Williams with Michael and still came out with Michael. <laughs> and I don't look like Wendy nor Michael, but in his mind, that's what he got. I look like my grandmother and my mother. And um, I don't know whoever my daddy is because I don't know my daddy. And so I, mean, I know my daddy ain't Michael Jackson, but I'm just saying, I don't know who my daddy is. I, I just... My grandma just told me he's a Puerto Rican man, but I don't know who my daddy is. I look like a Puerto Rican girl, so I guess I am Puerto Rican girl. But I don't know who my daddy is. There was a, a Puerto Rican man from Ponce who raised me, and I called him dad. Um, but, I, you know, all my brothers knew who their dad was, but I never found my father. And I am 61. And I've never found my dad. And, you know, I'm sure he's probably not alive now. But unless he's in his 80s, right? But 
just and by the way that is something that was told to me by a um a magazine writer of, or reporter writer it was astrology magazine i don't know if anyone ever got a subscription to astrology magazine and uh, many years ago like wow 30 years ago this is old i don't even know if my daughter was born i don't think my daughter was born yet so maybe 40 years ago anyway like 38 years ago maybe something like that and um it told me that my, my mother was poor that it, it, in poverty and that um, as long as I was with my mother, I would be in poverty. And that it was like her karma or something to that effect. They didn't really say the word karma a lot back then. But um, it specifically said that I would never know my father. I am now the age I am and still don't know who or what happened that I am here. If it was not for my grandmother, who was nosy like Mrs. Kravitz, <laughs> obviously watching my mom doing the do outside of the house all in her business knowing exactly who and when and counting the months and like really grandma really <laughs> that's the only reason i know that's the only reason because my grandma told me there is nothing about me that screamed puerto rican for real in my mind i never felt like i mean willie franco raised me so i always felt like i was puerto rican from that viewpoint but I didn't know until my grandma just screamed it at my mom one day. I saw you. I know who her dad is. I counted the months. And I, when I look at my daughter and I look at myself, I'm like, yeah, see, right. There's something up in there that don't belong, that she's right. But I don't know him. And um, even when we did the 23andMe, my daughter's a closest relative by blood was some child in some Hispanic country. I think Chile, something like that, something. It looked just like her. Anyway, I don't think people should make fun of the way people look anyway. We live in such a strange world, right? What, what's normal in, the, in today's society? What are you looking for? What is it that, you know, makes me so strange? Why do I, why is it Michael Jackson? Like, these are the questions of life. Like, I'm like, why? Why are you picking on me? Because I don't get what's normal or what's so different about me. There's a million faces on the internet, a million. They're all different. I, I, maybe mine is unique. I don't know. But um, I would like more positive to come from seeing me. Like, yeah, you know, hear what I got to say or, you know, at least be a positive force um, and not a negative force. And I guess in a way, that's part of what I'm trying to say. There's so much negativity, so many trolls, so many people out there ready to tear someone else down based on something they think they see or their own concept of what normal is or acceptable is because you realize that what you think is acceptable or normal or attractive or beautiful or whatever is you, it's all from the eye of your, you know, the eye of the beholder is you. What you might consider attractive or beautiful, like I can't stand them girls with the baby hair spittles on their foreheads, what the? That ain't natural. But do some people think that's everything? If you ain't got that baby hair spittle going, I'm like, what? That is not natural. So I, I'm not into that. And I'm older. I'm like I said, I'm, you know, I'm past 55. So I'm from a different era where dumb baby hairs, I mean, yeah, you want to have it when if you're gonna have it laid down, you wanna have it laid. 
But all the, like, they literally sell fake baby hair to put on your forehead on purpose. I'm just saying. I, maybe this is just an old person rambling. <laughs> I should just call this old person rambles, man. Because this is the way an old person looking at y'all. Y'all looking at me like there's something wrong with me. I'm looking at y'all like, y'all putting fake hair on your forehead. I just saw this thing where the, the, the millennial, wait, was it the Gen Xers are upset at the millennials because they say the millennials look younger than them. <laughs> These kids in their 20s looking 40 and 50 years old. Why are they looking 40 at 25? Why? Now, me and my daughter are talking because she's a millennial and she looks very young for her age. And um, one of the things she was saying is the young kids they're into things like you know botox and fillers and like the young girls that went into sephora like the 12 year olds wearing makeup for grown-ups um that didn't exist when i was growing up and um there is no desire uh even yet for that i see i got ozempic neck right now but i'm still in the midst of weight loss and when i do this you see how young i look for my age i am not messing that up you want to know why because when people sometimes they'll go in there to get something done and they come back out looking like lions and cheetahs and bears mm -mm, i'm not doing it i'm just gonna get old like I'm going to go with whatever God has got planned. I, you know, you might not think I'm look natural, but all of this is here. This is all God. Okay. And I'm going to keep it that way as long as I can, as long as I'm allowed. Because um, once you start putting in things like the fillers and the, the implants and, and lifts and tightenings and Botox, and your face stops moving. And like, I literally have had not one thing done to my face. Not one. One, I can't afford it. Or I have felt like I couldn't. I haven't even had my eyebrows messed with. I haven't done nothing. Nothing. And I hear people saying stuff about me all the time. Like, she done this, she done that. And I'm like, mm -mm, nothing. Um, I play with filters. I like them just like everybody else. I'm using the same filter everybody else you. I'm not nothing. I ain't taking chances. I don't trust it. You know, my grandmother lived to 97 years old and she always said, don't go under the knife. Like try to stay away from the knife, like as much as possible if you can, that the longer you avoid surgeries, <laughs> the longer you extend your life and she was not wrong and many of the women in our family tried to live by that and i had one aunt lived to 102 and she didn't really pass until they put her into a a, a, a home so um another one was 95 i think and i think she would have made it to 100 but her daughter was murdered by her grandson and you know, really quickly her heart failed. It was too much. That's too much. Um, too much. Um, that reminds me, I need to check on my cousin who's kind of like a survivor of that family and um, I've not heard or seen her. I need to find her number. Anyway, you guys, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I'm, I, like I said, this is gonna be called old person rambles because um, this is how old people think and you're I'm sorry. Okay, so I've got a plan of what I want to do. I'm going to do this um, and just use this time for this um, idea that I've got. But some time ago, I had made this plan of uh, outlining different podcasts or things that I was going to do. And um, I've not followed through. <laughs> I've not followed through and done that, but I want to follow through. 
and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my background and then I'm just going to talk about a particular subject or two. I'm not sure. We'll see. So give me a second. I'm going to set it up in just a moment. Hello, hello. It is Adrian. I am back. So you guys do, does this help me to look more efficient and proficient and professional and prepared for what it is we're about to do. I hope it does. Um, because I actually prepared to do what I'm about to do a long time ago. And I'm going to actually um, just read these out. I, I'm not sure if they'll all be recorded today, but this will be part of a series. And the series um, is one is how to fight for your better life is one of them. Uh, the other is how to be your authentic self online. Uh, how to have fun and still profit online. How to live out your highest life. How to make it online and prosper. How to make a million view videos. I have done that. How to profit after 60 online. How to survive after a bad life. How to survive social isolation online or online social uh, isolation. Let me say that again. How to survive online or, or social online isolation or social isolation online. Because that is a whole thing. Maybe I'll talk about that. Uh, and how to turn your life around. And so let's go ahead and start with how to survive um, social isolation online. Let's do that. Let me let me go ahead and um, let me see if I can put that in the background so that you guys can actually see that as a background. Uh, give me a second, you guys. I'm, I'm actually, do I have it here? Yeah, here we go. Give me a second. Do, 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 Here we go. Okay, so I, we are going to do how to survive social, um, social isolation, social isolation. What do I mean by social isolation? Well, earlier I was just rambling and I was telling the story of how on TikTok, some gentleman that I don't know said to me, damn, you look like a combination of Wendy Williams and Michael Jackson. I think that's the exact words. Hold on. No, it's damn. You look like Michael Jackson and Wendy Williams mixed together. That's what he said. So I had made a post and said, why are, why do people say mean things to me? Why say such a thing? It, it's not true. So why? <clears throat> I just shared this because every single day, I get messages like this, in spite of wearing my light hair, taking care of myself physically, even using light color contacts, people still call me Michael Jackson. Why? Is it simply because I'm pale? Surely I'm not the only light skinned person out there. I think it's, you know, my square chin, but who knows <clears throat> what other people see when they see me. This is why I'm like, screw all the haters. I'm absolutely fabulous, just as I am zero filters. And I had posted that. Um, why? Because I get tired of being uh, socially trolled. Um, like, hold on, you guys. I'm going to take a sip of tea. Give me a tip. Because mm. I feel like I want to spill the tea, right? I feel like I want to spill the tea. I feel, you know, some of you guys think you're being creative by going online, saying mean and cruel things to other people, trying to socially isolate them or make them feel less than, or I guess making, trying to make yourself feel superior to them is what's going on. Um, I don't know if it necessarily is working with someone like me, because first of all, I'm 60. And for 60, I'm freaking perfect. 
Okay. I mean, you can say whatever you want about me, but there's a lot of 61 year olds who wish they woke up and was me. Okay. I'm just saying, cause I got it like that for this age. Now, I don't even know if you're going to make it to 61, but if you do, who knows what you're going to look like at 61 if you're messing with me at, you know, whatever age you are. You might already look worse now, trolling people online because you think that's the thing to do. What? You ain't got nothing better to do with your life than to troll some 60-year-old online and try to make fun of their looks when they look probably 99.9% .9 better than other 61 year olds who are, you know, I'm just saying, I'm no, no, nothing messing with 60 year olds or 61 year olds or even 65 year olds. I'm just saying a lot of us let ourselves go by the time you get here. If you get here, some of you ain't getting here. You ain't getting past 40 or 45 or 50 because you're not taking care of yourselves. And you're doing things like trolling strangers online, which is to me, that's something you shouldn't be doing. You're going to hit the wrong person and they're going to take it out in a physical way. Y'all need to stop. And when did this become a thing of messing with other people, purposely trying to hurt or destroy other people? Why? What is that about? Is it because you see just a little bit of light there and oh my gosh there's light let me put some darkness on that light oh my gosh there's a there there's a fire there let me go put some water on that fire and put it out i mean it's just for me at this age it's just the ember let me go and put that ember out. just saying what is it in people that purposely want to socially isolate other people online like to create like these false class systems of what's perfect and what's not perfect and who is great and who's not great and who's pretty and who some the people they think are hot and pretty i'm like or they're all the same like there was a moment when the only thing that apparently was supposedly pretty was a Kardashian face. And you could just go right out and buy one of them. So it's like anyone with individuality who didn't go out and purchase the face is so, so all of a sudden they're not attractive or they're ugly. No, they're real. <laughs> that's called a God face. God gave you that face. That's what that's called. God's face. I can't change what God gave me. Okay. And you are not going to force me to go out and change what God gave me because something in you don't like what God did. That's you. I'm not changing because of that. And you think coming out and, and just making fun of me online or anyone, because this is not just happening to me. Look, did you see how they trolled JLo? JLo. I mean, she's not quite as old as me, right? She's what, she says she's 54. I don't know if that's true, but she says she's 54. Anyway, man, she got trolled. They messed her. TikTok was just cruel. Just mean, I mean, just saying, like, wow. Like I can sit around and whine over being trolled, but I'm not the only one. I mean, they get the stars bad. Like I said, there was a point when the Kardashians was everything, but now the Kardashians, oh my gosh, they've been really trolling them. And like I said, Jennifer Lopez, oh my gosh. I mean, when I'm talking about social isolation, I am not just talking about people who are nobodies like myself. I'm talking about even those kind of people. They get it too. Um, I mean, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be J-Lo and like literally get canceled right like in that way but i heard she's getting uh um what is it the rock and roll hall of fame or she's getting honored somewhere and i'm thinking is this the right timing for this but i guess they're trying to maybe you know um play devil's advocate for what's going on like they need something to offset that 
Yeah. That's, yeah. And I think a lot of what's going on with her might be because of her, her connection with Diddy. So that could be part of it, you know. Um, um, I'm just thinking that that, it, that could be why her popularity, although they, it was something she did when she came out and she, you know, took off her, her wig or her, her piece and, and her hair was all over and she was trying to be more relatable. And at that moment, I guess she was not relatable uh, to the people around Jenny and the blog or whatever from that area. And they, it just, it just mushroomed. It, You know, what can you do? Like I said, there's there's a lot of trolling going on online right now. A lot of meanness going on. I'm not saying she deserved it, don't deserve it. I'm not in that quarter at all. I'm just saying overall, people have gotten accustomed to saying and being, saying mean things and being mean to people online. Like the way you would never do in real life I don't think, but online people seem to think it's okay. And, you know, I have gotten in trouble several times on TikTok for things I've said, but I, I have written to TikTok on several occasions and told them, I try to keep my TikTok funny. It, if you really just go like from video to video, I really try to keep it somewhat light and if it's not light it's or political i'm i'm definitely blue i'm not ever going to go in the red for any reason at this time because of the person they're put in the front um i i am from jersey i'm never going to uh go 45 ever ever there's nothing that would make me do it nothing to me he's a criminal and um belongs in prison but saying that in this day with his cult, because they're a cult, um, it can create social isolation because they don't like anyone who doesn't like him. It, it, it's crazy, but it's a cult. So if they even catch a whiff that you don't like him, they will totally social, socially isolate you because you're not in their clique, you can't speak their language. Um, if they're listening to, um, what is it, uh, True Social, I don't speak their language at all. I'm completely never going to listen to, I can't stand listening to that man. Just his voice does something to the, like, I can't, it gives me a migraine. Um, and the lies, I can't take the lies. I'm a double Capricorn. I've got Saturn in the first house and Mercury. So truth is everything. I mean, real truth, not your truth, the real truth. Because there is truth. There, there's what you want to spin, Gemini, as truth. And then there is real truth. That is just, it is facts. What they call truth, what they call facts. The facts are the facts, Jack. You want to spin them around and make them go your way but it doesn't matter to me it's manipulating reality and i can't stand that and it's so gemini it's so disgusting in my opinion that people are falling for it and can't um seem to see or feel their way through it I'm like by this time you should know we're dealing with a compulsive liar who makes up tall tales so why fall for it now i don't get that at all. I... So, you know, that creates social isolation because that is one third of our nation, at least, of these people who believe that. They believe in those lies or they are inspired by them or I, you know, whatever it might be. And so, because I am very vocal, like, please don't bring your cult to my area. <laughs> Um, it gets me socially isolated in that respect. Um, the fact that I wear blonde hair uh, or blondish hair, in this case, it's multicolored in this case. But um, the fact that I am, you know, the way I am, 
I feel like that socially isolates me from a certain type of, of um, person of color who does not agree with me. They don't agree with the way I look anyway because I'm too pale for them. All they see is Michael Jackson or Wendy Williams or Michael Jackson or somebody like that that they can compare me to. Um, I don't even know if they even see me like even as a half Puerto Rican person, they just see me as someone, I don't know. I don't know what, you know, I just know I get a lot of weird comments from, especially black men. They tend to always call me Michael and I, I'm like, okay, whatever you're seeing, because I know that's not who I am, but if it makes them feel better. Um, so a social isolation is a thing. Whether you're feeling it, whether it's like on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, Pinterest, wherever you are, it's the inability to feel like you are a part of the crowd, that you're one of everybody else. You're being pinpointed, picked out, um, targeted for social isolation tactics, whether it's saying you're abnormal, you don't look like everybody else, or making fun of you, saying you look like Michael Jackson, or anything it is to tear you down uh, a derogatory remark, or simply avoiding liking your post, no matter what you post. Some people, for whatever reason, isolate people they don't they will not like their posts they will not support them they don't um share their messages they don't um they just scroll right by uh no matter what they do that's part of the social isolation thing and it is real okay it is not a make pretend thing people do that and i've even caught myself doing it and i have made sure i caught myself like oh why did I just skip past that? Like, I don't want to purposely um, skip past that. And, and if there is somebody who makes me want to do that, then I want to question what is it in me that I'm feeling or seeing or experiencing that makes me want to skip past this person's message that is just as valid as anyone else's. And that's something that takes a little bit of um, inner talk, inner exploration, if you're doing that to other people. But understand if you're doing that, then others are doing that to you. And um, it's a thing where people will automatically make a snap judgment based on what they think they see with their eyes uh, or they're, they're experiencing, or your image creates in them some type of, you know, characterization or um, caricature of somebody or something that they think represents you, but it's not you. And that causes social isolation. Now, this can go even deeper because there are young kids who uh, get socially isolated from, say, um, their school or some type of board or something where everybody else in their school is on. Like, I'm not even going that deep. Or colleges, that could be really painful. Oh, my gosh, where you're really pinpointed that way. Um, there have been stories about the, the trans people who have been targeted uh, because of social issues. Whatever it might be, just know that the feeling of social isolation is real. So if you're, even if you're not actually experiencing it, but you're feeling it. Like I made 20 posts and I only got five views or I got five likes out of 20 posts or whatever it might be that makes you feel like, wow, am I being socially isolated or something like that? You might really be. And so it's, it's important that you work on how to expand your reach on all of your social media platforms, um, change out or revolve your friends list, add more people, keep doing uh, following more people, staying more involved, 
you know, it might, sometimes we have a friends list that is nothing but a bunch of haters. And we've got to, um, we got to trade out that list, right? We want people that are connected to us or around us or influencing us to enhance who we are or feel enhanced by who we are. So if you've got people who are draining you or you feel like they're a drain to you or they're negative, you're feeling negative vibes coming at you or anything like that, you have a right to clean out your friends list you have a right to add new friends, add new followers, join a new clique, um, you know, uh, join new groups, be a part of what vibes with your soul and your spirit, what makes you feel alive. You know, our time, whether it's online or offline, is our time. We got 24 hours a day and nobody wants to waste those 24 hours playing around with people who are just trying to tear you down. So if you are experiencing that in any capacity, you, you know, with groups, your profiles, your social, like, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. My, my Facebook had slowed down to a snail's pace. Like, I mean, nothing. There was nothing going on on my Instagram. There was nothing going on on my Facebook. So I connected my Facebook to my Instagram that way I only had to post once I, you know, I don't want to go through the pain twice. <laughs> and I just started posting pretty much what I'm posting on TikTok or, or, or whatever. Um, not so much on YouTube. I, I still try to maintain some anonymity there, but um, I ended up getting a couple of videos that had one has almost 3 million views and another almost 2 million views and another almost a million views. I've got you know, that's like 6 million views between three videos almost. And um, it made me realize that it doesn't matter if you've got 5,000 friends and none of them like your post. Yeah, I got 5,000 friends and none of them were liking my post. So I just started making reels or sharing my reels from TikTok and I ended up getting way more followers. Now that I've got almost 9,000 followers. So I'm almost doubled my amount of followers. Um, just because I didn't stop. I don't know what my original friends were doing. A lot of them were like um, games. I played games with them, like casino games and mafia wars and farm life. So maybe we, they were just not connected. We're not resonating. I'm more into talking about deep things like this, uh, either business or, you know, I'm a life coach now and I talk about manifestation and astrology and, uh, you know, life in general, I'm life and death. I mean, I've faced I, right now and even my stomach feels weird. You know what I mean? I'm facing life and death issues at my age and I'm not going to uh, fool around and talk about BS. Now, I like to keep it light. I like to play around and you'll see a lot of funny videos on on my uh, my profile. I like that. Just realize one of my eyebrows looks definitively darker than the other one. <laughs> I'm just saying, sorry. But I'm just saying, um, I, I like to keep it light, okay? So I'm, I'm only gonna get but so deep. Um, I, I, I'll try not to make it really heavy or painful, but I, I also like to keep it upbeat. And there was something I had saw somewhere and it was like when, um, how did they put it like, um, when you are someone who is of the light, I mean, this is basically what it was saying. Basically, if you're someone who is of the light, a light worker or anything like that, um, you, you can almost expect to have attacked from darkness. Um, they, they're they attracted to the light like moths. Now, I don't know any of these people who come and call me names and say I look like Michael Jackson or make fun of my face or whatever it is I'm doing or I don't know. It's something about me that when they see me, they feel like they have a right to just come up and say the meanest, cruelest things you could say to a woman. I don't know why. I, it just, it happens. 
And um, I can attest to it because it happens to me. Um, so social isolation is real. The thing is, how do we deal with it? Um, for months, I can tell you my self-esteem was so low. Now, my self-esteem was low for several reasons. One, I, I've got PTSD from, you know, bad marriages, bad life, you know, bad experiences. But also I had gained back a great deal of weight and there's so much inside of me because I was once 500 pounds uh, about gaining weight and things like that. So I ended up going on Ozempic, which, you know, a lot of people are like, Ooh, I'm still like, Ooh, I'm still scared of myself. But I wanted to lose the weight because my, my self-esteem was gone. I really, I was just hiding in my house. Not, I lost myself. I began to lose myself. And so um, I'm grateful for going on the Ozempic and losing the 100 pounds. I needed to lose the 100 pounds. Um, the issue is that um, I stopped doing things. Like while before, I would say almost all of 2003 and so far the first four months of 2004, I'm still not back up to the type of activity level I was at say in 2002, when I was holding my webinars, you know, making sales, um, working for clients, um, running several businesses, several groups, I was doing all that. And it was not a stress on me in any way. Now, I, if I can get up and watch a Netflix and put on makeup and clothes, that is something, okay? Um, because it, it, it just got to the point where I, I felt depleted. And also, I think with uh, Ozempic, it makes you a little sick. Like right now, my tummy feels a little yucky. Um, but I haven't eaten anything, and it's 3 o'clock. And so I haven't eaten since this time yesterday. So that could be part of it. Um, but I stopped doing things. And I know that it, <clears throat> that's a symptom of people who are experiencing some kind of reaction to social interaction online whether it's because they had an experience or they are going through imposter syndrome or um, they just don't have enough self-confidence or whatever it is sometimes it's not that we have the imposter syndrome is that someone comes and says something and it triggers something else and if you've got <clears throat> other issues it then becomes an issue you know it really becomes a problem in the case of myself as someone who was once 500 pounds i've got all kind of self-esteem issues on top of that astrologically i've got saturn in the first house and it's my chart ruler i'm a double capricorn and so and i got aquarius intercepted in the first house which already gives me this vibe of being different feeling different because saturn's in aquarius and there it is right so when people come at me and they start saying things like you look like a combination of michael jackson and wendy williams or something to that effect and um you know it, it really starts to play at you you've got to figure out how you're going to survive that i'm some people never experience social isolation they're just popular and then there are some people like myself who whatever they do they got to work for it because they just don't get that kind of support so you might be of that you know experiencing that and if that's the case then you know you've got to figure out how you're going to survive that because online let me tell you it is a jungle okay the people are can be mean and so protect yourself that's how you survive social isolation is you protect yourself you insulate yourself so no matter what they say or do to hurt you 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 are ready and you are protected you're going to be okay okay anyway this has been adrian obi i am the owner of astrology a look inside i also have uh, brainstorming with adrian podcast on spotify and you can find me astrology a look inside on instagram facebook TikTok, youtube um 
you know, and the website, astrologylookinside.com. Um, I'm also the owner of perceptiveguidance.com. I invite you guys to reach out to me if you would like to talk to someone about whatever might be bothering you or you might need to have someone to talk to about. Um, I am a certified life coach, abundance and manifestation coach, and um, a meditation coach, and also a sacred soul alignment healer and practitioner. So I look forward to working with you and helping those who reach out to me. Much love to you, much light to you, and have a wonderful, wonderful life. And you now know how to survive online. Hello, hello, this is Adrian Obi. I am the owner of Astrology Look Inside and PerceptiveGuidance.com. And I am here to talk about something that I, you hear people talk about all the time, but I wanna talk about it. And it's how to be your authentic self online. How to be your authentic self online. I, you know, it's one of those things that I don't know if I, I guess I always was my authentic self online. But I don't know if everyone knows that's my authentic self. I don't know what people think is your authentic self. I'm just being myself, whatever that is. And, um, you know, some people think being authentic means just coming out and having your hair all over your head and no makeup on and, you know, just wearing whatever you feel. That to me doesn't scream authentic. That just screams sloppy. So, I mean, I want to be myself, which is what I would do for myself, right? Normally in an authentic way. So I'm not gonna come on and not be whoever I wanna be. Like, it's who I am. And I, I really want people to understand that because some people think being your authentic self is being who they want you to be. Like, I don't think it's right that you wear blonde hair. And I don't think that you wearing blonde wigs is you being your authentic self. So I don't think you're being your authentic self because you're coming out here wearing blonde wigs. When the reality is I wear blonde wigs every single day of my life because that's what I do. And if I came online and didn't be me, who the hell would I be? Why would I come on and be somebody else for you? Why would I do that? Tell me, because I've been wearing blonde hair since 2000, what, 14? So why would I stop doing it for you to make you feel more comfortable in me being me? Can't you accept me for who I am, for who I'm being, for who I've chosen to be, for who I live my life as? Because this is how I live my life. Who else do you expect to show up? This was a real problem with my family members um, when I first started changing. I Because my first changes, I think, were physical because I started losing weight. And it started changing the way I looked because I used to look, I used to look like Nell Carter. I, <laughs> I'm not joking. I look just like Nell Carter. I have, I have a picture of her. I was going to find, there's a picture of me that looked just like this picture I found in Nell Carter. I look like Nell Carter. I, I know that sounds crazy because I don't look a thing like her now. I mean, people just say I look like Michael Jackson and, and stuff like that, but I did. I really did. I used to have short the short little afro that I wore because you know, my hair curly. And um, I, I just wore lip gloss. I never wore makeup. And I looked like her without makeup and without hair. That's what I look like. And, you know, a couple of hundred pounds. But we change as people. We grow, we change, we mature, we, we, we're like wine. You know, not all wine tastes like water. <laughs> Some wine actually tastes good. It's got flavor, it's, it's, it's mellowed, it's, it's matured, it's, you know, whatever it's done. It's got a taste to it, a, a flavoring to it. 
And as we mature, we begin to develop things like that. And I know for myself, I, you know, I'm much older than, you know, the average median age now, I guess. But whoever I become, I've aged into this person. I'm not going to change. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I, I could try, but that wouldn't be my authentic self. That'd be who you want me to be. Who you want me to be is not my authentic self. Who I want to be and who I am is my authentic self because I'm vibing with what comes naturally out of me. I don't have to put on an air of who I am. I just be who I am. That feels so much more better than being who you think you're supposed to be. Because even when you think you're trying to be who you, you think they want you to be, there's gonna be somebody out there who doesn't like who you thought they wanted you to be. So why not just be who you are? It still might have people who don't like who you are presenting yourself to be, because I, I still have people who don't like me. But at least I feel justified in myself because I'm just being who I am. I'm not being somebody else. This is me. Can you accept me for who I am, please? Because this is who I be. I don't know who else I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Because sometimes I feel like people are looking at me like, who else are you? Who else am I? This is the same face I get every single day. I wake up with this face. I go to bed with this face, right? This is who I be. And I, I'm not going to be able to be anybody else. Not consistently and not effectively. Because that would not be me. And it would not ring true with me. Even if I was faking it out and it was, okay, I'm going to give you an example. And Lord, I hope I'm not going to step on no toes, whoever hears this. But I run a group, it's called Black Women Promote. And in that group, there's a whole bunch of Black women. Almost 30,000 of us, to be honest. And they're all Black entrepreneurs. Now, they're, we're all different uh, because all Black women come from all different kinds of Black backgrounds. I was about to say Black ground. <laughs> Pun. Anyway, we all do. We're all different. Like I said, I might look the way I look, but I've had people come at me and, and swear I'm mixed, curse me out, say I'm mixed, but mixed people ain't black and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, huh? Even if I was, even if that was true, I was raised 100% black. I was raised by my black grandmother, my mother. I don't know any white folks that raised me, who am I supposed to be? I am who I am because I am who I am. I'm not putting on who I am, I am who I am. I'm not trying to be Adrian, I'm Adrian. Adrian's not even perfect, but she's the Adrian I got. So I gotta be her, I'm gonna be who I am who resonates with my spirit and and makes me feel like, okay, I'm cool. This is where I, it's like I'm in that, that cut right there. Yeah, that feels right. That's me. That's, I'm, when I wake up, I'm her. When I go to sleep, I'm her. I don't have to make pretend I'm her. I'm just her. You know, and it's so funny. I had a friend who said to me, because um, we've known each other for years, and she said um, for me to make a video about, me doing my my makeup or whatever like i'm doing something fancy and i said d you're not going to believe this oh i said her name sorry I said girl you're not going to believe this but i do my makeup in five to ten minutes like i just do the same thing every I, like i that's it i there is nothing special i got one layer on and some powder and some blush and some lipstick and mascara and I'll try to do my eyes. Like I made one eye way darker than the other eye. But you know, that's it. That I, I'm not, I don't do all that crazy mess. I don't do all that. That's that young girl stuff. That's like I said, the, making the Gen Xers look like they're 40s and when they're in their 20s. I don't do all that. I just do what the basics are to make me feel like I, I feel good. Sometimes I'll contour my nose so it'll look a little smaller. 
but I try to avoid that too much too because they call me Michael if I contour it too much you know what I mean so I don't like being called Michael Jackson but there are little things <laughs> see it's the funny stuff like that right but this is what I mean about being your th authentic self you've got to be you why because no matter what it is you're doing you're never going to be able to satisfy everybody there's always going to be somebody who sees you what you did how you did it how you looked, how you said it what you wore how you wore it and they're going to pick with it they're going to find a flaw in it there's going to be something wrong in it there's something wrong with you there's something wrong that you did and you've got to figure out how you're going to survive that and the best way to survive anything like that is to just be your darn self. Why? Because when you're you, you don't have to figure out who else to be. Just be whoever you are and let them deal with that. Because that's who you be. If I had to sit up here and pretend to be somebody else, I would have to remember who that was every time I came on. I don't got time for that. I don't got time for I got time for that. I don't. I got enough time to think about what I got to think about, and that's it. To be who I am. And the thing is, I think at the heart of it, because I have Saturn in the first house, I'm such an astrologer, sorry, I'm always referencing. Um, but because of that, and having being a double Capricorn of all things, being accepted is so vital. Um, I've got Aquarius intercepted in the first house and a, that rules other people, Aquarius. So it's it's being finding a, a, a form of being myself and being accepted for myself. That is vital for my psyche. That that's why I ran over to TikTok. The moment I realized people liked me, I was like, hey, I'm gonna hang out here. <laughs> that kind of stuff, validation, that's vital for our psyches. It really is. For people to think, oh yeah, we're just gonna isolate this person and not give them any type of um, support or a show of hand or whatever, that, that's just cruel and unusual. Why would you do that to anybody? And, and, and you know, cause I think some people think that's some, something they should do or I, I, I don't get that at all. But, um, you know, I'm just gonna just keep being myself regardless of what people think of me or say about me or or whatever just keep being who you are and eventually those who do like who you are or what you're saying or you're like in my case like my videos my shorts or whatever they're seeing whatever those millions of people are seeing um they came regardless i i can post videos on youtube and get no likes no views no nothing and post something on Facebook and get a million, two million, three million views. It's right. It could be the same video. I've tested it. I could post something on TikTok, post it on Facebook, and post it on YouTube and, and Instagram. And all four places will give me all four different results from the same exact video. So it has nothing to do with the quality of what you're doing the quality of what you're saying, the quality of your work. A lot of times it has to do with algorithms, who they're showing it to or not showing it to, who they're blocking you from. If you're restricted, not restricted, that's that's one of the things. Um, I found out on TikTok I was restricted for like months and didn't know it. Might be restricted now and don't know. Um, little things like that is what makes a difference. And... Um, I feel like sometimes people compromise being who they are authentically because they want to either fit into the algorithm or get more views or be pop. I don't know, whatever it might be, but eventually that's going to come back to bite you if, it, if you're not being authentic, because the only thing that is consistent and persistent is the real you, because that's always going to be there. No matter what you're trying to hide it with, mask it with, and pretend over, the real you is still under there. I, you know, I'm sure whatever essence of me, the Jersey girl, 
the, the, I was born in Jersey, right? Are you born in Jersey? I was born in Jersey. So that Jersey girl, whatever that toughness is, is I, I was born in Jersey. And also as a little girl, I had to survive Baltimore. So imagine Camden, New Jersey and Baltimore. So, you know, I'm one of those, 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 those ghetto girls. So somewhere inside, I mean, I was put in the suburbs and that's why I'm, I'm kind of, um, suburban. <laughs> I was put in the suburbs at 10 and you know, that's what happened to me. Um, but the early, early, early years, man, it was survive, survival of the fittest. Like not everybody survived what, you know, being a ghetto child. My brother, Michael didn't make it. I'm just saying being a ghetto child is not easy. And, and I definitely was, um, but whatever it is, I mean, even things like that, I mean, when you bring your pains and your past and your stories and your, you know, whatever, um, it doesn't matter. It's you. It's authentically you. Don't be nobody else. And what I was going to say about the group that I managed with the 26,000 black women, because I never really got into it, is that they didn't accept me. I mean, I am a, an admin there, and I still don't know if I'm accepted there. I can post there. I only have 400 friends out of 30,000 there. Why? Because what? I wear blonde hair. I'm too pale. I don't know. I stopped caring. You know what I do? I still come there and let them know, hey, I'm an admin here, and I'm still in, in charge here. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll just come and exert my, my influence because I have it. And their dislike of my coloring or my hair or whatever, the way I speak or the way I dress or whatever the reason is that more of those women have not followed me or, or, or friended me or whatever it is. I, you know, I can't put a, a finger on it, but there obviously must be some reason, right? And that stuff used to bother me. My daughter used to say, mom, drop out of that group. Why are you in that? It's toxic. She might be right. It might still be toxic. But right now, and I'm like, I'm still going to run whatever event I'm going to run. I'm still going to promote whatever event I'm going to promote. I'm still going to be a professional in the professional way that I have to be a professional. And I'm still going to do what I need to do in order to keep the group safe. So all of that hate, they can take that hate. That's their hate. That's their energy. That's not my hate nor my energy. So I'm not, I'm not wasting any of my life force at all. I won't do it. See, and that's the point I wanted to make. I'm not going to not be me to make those women feel better. Why should I do that? What would that give me? That would then give me less integrity because I would not be me. I would be whatever, something, something I made up in my head or what, I don't know. There'd be no integrity there. Do you see what I'm saying? Being authentically you, even when it's not popular, still gives you a sense of like, hey, I, at least I did it. At least I said it. At least I stated it. At least I did that webinar. At least I made that product launch. At least I made my podcast, whatever it is. You didn't cow down. You didn't cave in. You went for it. You did the best you could do. It doesn't matter if they didn't like you or not. You did you. <laughs> and that's all we can do is do us, baby. <laughs> that's, that's the reality. I'm going to do me. And I think that's the point of what I've been trying to say. How to be your authentic self online? Do you. Be you, do you child. Don't be anybody else. You don't have to follow after other people. You don't have to pretend to be other people. You don't have to act like other people. You don't have to speak like other people. You don't have to do anything like anybody else because you are you and you do what you do. Not what they do, but what you do. Whatever you do is what everybody's gonna pay for. Whatever they do, they're going to them for, right? Because there can only be one. <laughs> There's one of you, so why not be it? Just saying, be you, okay? Anyway, this has been Adrian of 
astrologyalookinside.com, perceptiveguidance.com, and a host of other things I do. Um, you can find me just about everywhere at Astrology Look Inside on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, at Astrology Look Inside. On LinkedIn, I'm under Adrian Obey, O B E Y, because that's that's me. That's my family name. And uh, yeah, okay. Also, I like to invite everybody who is within the sound of my voice to join me on gregariousone.com. Gregarious the number one dot com. That's gregarious the number one. Dot com. That's my social media site. I promise to put more stuff there. Just like I said, I haven't been doing a lot uh, for the last year about. So it's a little not as robust as I would like it to be. So I'm going to make it a little bit robust this year. Okay. All right. So anyway, this has been Adrian. Let's love. Let's put on our dancing disco music and let's dance and disco ourselves right on out of here. Hey. All right. I will party. Yes. Be your authentic self. Yes, whatever that is. Just be you. Mm. Yes. Yes. It don't matter if they don't like you. You like you. That's all that matters. Hey. I love me. Hey, 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 Be you. It does feel good when you're yourself, though, doesn't it? It feels good when you're just yourself. Letting it all hang out. You don't care. People can make fun of you all they want. Go ahead and make fun of me. I don't care. Hey, I'm going to be me. Hey.